Hey everyone, Kane from Virgin here, and today we are finally covering Cyberpunk 2077 by CD Projekt Red. Now let's make this very clear. This is a video that's covering the PC version of Cyberpunk 2077, and only the PC version. If you want a console review, you're out of luck here. I don't have that version of the game, I'm sorry. Secondly, I have another video being made on Cyberpunk. It's either out already, or out the day after this, where I'm discussing the whole CD Projekt Red thing. Also, just because I sound a certain way in this video, it doesn't mean I'm guaranteed to sound a similar way in that one. They're their own discussions, hence why they're getting their own videos. So please don't leave a comment about how I'm deliberately ignoring the whole situation there, because I'm really not. They're just getting their own discussion, which will probably be longer than this video is by itself. With that out of the way though, it's time I finally ask, Cyberpunk 2077, how bad can it be? The story of Cyberpunk takes place in Shock of All Shocks, 2077, centering around the classic tabletop RPG location of Night City. You play as V, a cybernetically enhanced mercenary for hire going around doing odd jobs for Night City's different fixes in order to make it to the big leagues. This is where one of the cooler aspects of Cyberpunk comes into play, as not only can you customise the way your V looks, you also get a choice of free backgrounds which change the beginning of the game as well as certain aspects of it throughout that being Nomad, Street Kid, and Corpo. This was one of my favourite parts of Cyberpunk, as when playing I found it really allowed me to invest and enjoy the role-playing aspect of the game, and helped inspire my playing of a character without accidentally forcing me down a certain path, or away from one, see any Bethesda game. I will say that I wish we got to see more of the life paths before V's time during the main story though. In all three of the life path openings, V mentions some events that happened off screen, and I want to see that. I want to see V splitting from his clan, or the operation that went wrong for Arasaka, or why V returned to Night City from Atlanta. Instead, what we get is a very brief glimpse of V's previous life, before all reconverging on the same path. They aren't bad by any means though, in fact I think they're pretty damn great, I really enjoyed the two options that I played. I also enjoy how they come back into play throughout Cyberpunk via special dialogue options. They can either give me some unique outcomes to quests, or more interesting information in certain scenarios. It's a really neat little way to make the character feel more personable to each player. I just wish they were longer, because as it stands, they're all a pretty short introduction to V's life before the main plot of meeting Jackie, doing some jobs for Dexter Sean, and planning a heist that goes horribly wrong, leading to a now dying V being killed by a biochip containing the digital soul of rocker boy turned terrorist Johnny Silverhand. Speaking of Johnny, let's talk about how big of a role he plays in Cyberpunk, as it really did surprise me how active a part he plays in the narrative. Instead of just a small side character that becomes the object of the main quest, Johnny is basically a second protagonist throughout the game, and is V's companion with his own series of quests to do. Speaking of quests though, I want to say that despite the game's issues that we'll get into, the storytelling and world building in Cyberpunk 2077 is some of the best that I've ever experienced in a video game. Every quest has something interesting going on, be it a well-written character, an interesting subtext, a data shard or computer with lore, or even the occasional interruption via Johnny. There is always something that makes these quests feel special. My personal favourite quests, though, are the ones where you don't actually do anything of note. You talk to someone, travel with someone, attend an event, or spend time somewhere. These are where the game really shines. You talk to these amazing, fleshed-out characters who feel real all while learning more about them and the world that surrounds us, and I honestly can't wait to explore more of them because I really just enjoy seeing the world building the CD Projekt Red have done here. It's worth the price of admission alone in my opinion. Because we're playing this on a PC and because it's a newer game that is a little more demanding, I should note that I'm not playing in max settings here. What you're seeing in today's video is mostly the high settings default, with a little bit of ray tracing medium thrown in here and there, and I've gotta say that I really love the way this game looks. It's definitely a nighttime game, as the cyberpunk aesthetic doesn't lend itself too nicely to the bright sunny days of California, but everything still looks great, even when not maxed out. If you've read any PC review or report on cyberpunk, you'd likely already know that it has a lot of bugs, and let me be honest with you right now, it does. 
It's not as bad on PC as some places are making it out to be though, as none of the bugs are especially game breaking from my experience, but it must be noted that many of them are immersion breaking, which can really damage a game for a lot of people. I'm personally pretty resistant to having my immersion broken, as the way I play games is this weird experience where I'm both zoned in and completely aware at the same time. But even I have troubles keeping my immersion intact when chopsticks and cigarettes are floating around all the time, bits of UI aren't disappearing until I reload a save, and cars are straight up vanishing from the roads as soon as I turn around. Then we have the load distance issues, which are pretty bad as of writing. I've had weird lighting issues where it doesn't work properly, strange black spots that appear through the fog, and mountains that are just straight up see through at a certain distance when outside of Night City. So the game doesn't look bad, in fact it looks pretty good for the most part, it's just that there are a lot of graphical issues that really stop Cyberpunk from looking as good as it can be. What's also stopping it from looking as good as it could is the photo mode, which I'm going to be honest here, is pretty disappointing. The unique feature of being able to manipulate V whilst in photo mode is really cool and the poses are actually pretty great for the most part and allow for some great action shots. The problem is, is that the basic stuff like camera controls, depth of field, filters and frames are really below average. I tend just to take natural landscape shots with minor edits because it looks way better that way. The soundtrack though is amazing. Now there is a lot of it so I can't actually cover songs on an individual basis but let it be known that I've not really found a song that I didn't like. There was actually one song that I found in a quest that was bad, but I think it was deliberately bad, as it was trying to point you in that direction. Anyway, there are two main things I want to discuss in terms of its soundtrack. Firstly, streamer mode. Thank you for that. More games do this, please. It's really helpful. Secondly, can we get some kind of music player to walk around with, please? I really like walking the streets of Night City and looking at the views, but my god does it get boring without stuff to listen to. Not having music to walk to is practically the only thing that's keeping me driving in this game after 80 hours of game time. Speaking of which... Let's get this out of the way right now. Driving sucks in Cyberpunk. All the cars look great for the five seconds that they aren't crashing into walls because you dared move your stick an animator. It is so bad that I am willingly using a keyboard and mouse to drive in Cyberpunk, which breaks my one rule of, if driving is a big deal, use a controller. I even bought the special edition Silverhand controller to specifically play this game to do the driving with, and it is so bad that I maybe use that controller for around 15 minutes before giving up. That's 15 minutes out of 80 hours, by the way. Driving with a keyboard and mouse is at least bearable, and I feel somewhat in control of the bikes and normal slash muscle cars, even at high speeds. Sports cars are just a death trap, though, and I avoid them like the plague. The combat, meanwhile, is actually pretty fantastic overall. Nothing really stands out as the best, but it is a really fun and enjoyable experience from when I've gotten myself into combat scenarios that led to a firefight. Having played my primary character as a stealth-based quick hacker, I didn't actually fire a gun too often, though my solo character has made up for that. I do like the variety of weapons though, and love seeing the different types that I find when exploring Night City. I kind of just wish they were more customizable. You can add attachments and mods, which are fine, but you can't actually do anything to the aesthetics of the weapons, which doesn't seem very cyberpunk to me. Instead it becomes stats versus looks, and people are likely just going to pick stats anyway, so the guns may as well not have any aesthetic differences outside of the iconic or legendary ones. It's not a big deal, but it's just a little thing that could have gone a long way, especially in fleshing out the crafting system, which is kind of subpar for the most part. On the same note we have Cyberware, which actually has a very similar issue. All the attachments are fine, but they all have a purpose. There aren't really that many slash any which are just cosmetic. Like, this is cyberpunk, right? It seems baffling to me why we can't go get a metal arm or a leg, or subdermal watches or light tattoos, or hell, even the crazy skin tones like chrome, though that one would probably be a bit too much. It just feels like something that should be there, and it just isn't. And again, I want to stress that it's not bad. None of it is bad per se. It's just the little things that could have been there to take it to that next level in my opinion, and it's weird to see such details in some areas and then not in others. It's sort of inconsistent, like things weren't included because of the release date being what it was. Like for example, look at the leveling system in this game. 
The level up system in Cyberpunk is a combination of Fallout special system and the Elder Scrolls' attribute system and is lifted directly from the tabletop RPG. You have your big overarching skills in body, reflexes, technical ability, intellect and cool, and then each of those skills have their own perk trees which have their own XP and levels to improve the more you use them. It's a great system that really helps your V feel more unique to the build that you want to make. In the case of my Corpo V, he's a master hacker and can destroy entire rooms of people without ever being seen. But if bullets, knives or fists start flying, he isn't in a good place and often has to run, hide and use his hacking abilities just not to get torn to pieces. It's really well done and again allows the player to really specialize their own V to tell a story as a character instead of just an avatar for the player. Which makes it all the weirder to me that there are these seemingly obvious omissions that would have helped take it even further and improve what is already a fantastic experience to one that could have helped define a generation of games. Though we'll get into why that definitely isn't the case in the other video. To sum it up, Cyberpunk on PC is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle with the edge pieces missing. Sure, it's done enough to be playable and you can appreciate the art and the beauty of it, it just doesn't seem quite finished yet and needs those final pieces and finishing touches for it to be a true masterpiece. On the PC anyway. I can easily see this going down as one of my favourite games of all time just because I do love this genre, I love this setting, and I love what CD Projekt Red's fantastic dev team has done with the world, but I have a feeling it's not going to be like that for everyone, and to find out why, you'll have to tune into the other video. Press the subscribe button and the bell to be notified as soon as the video drops, and remember to go over to the other cyberpunk video we're doing where we're discussing CD Projekt Red and all of the disastrous nonsense that's going on around that game, I would greatly appreciate it. I've been Kane from Vivichim, and I'll see you all soon.